Hello, we here at Cisco Kits would like to welcome you to today's CCNA study topic where we'll be covering identifying Cisco equipment. Now this might not be so much of something you'll see on the exam, but it'll definitely be something you need to do in the real world. So by being familiar with the equipment, having actual hands-on experience with it, that's going to help cement all your CCNA topics that you're going to need to master to cover your CCNA certification exam. So without further ado, let's bounce on over to our first slide and we're going to take a look at a Cisco 2501 router. Now Cisco calls this the back of the router but actually this is what you're going to be looking at most of the time. A um, few things we're going to look at here over on the left hand side we have the AUI port and this is actually your Ethernet port. A lot of people ask me or they'll receive the router and they'll say hey there's no Ethernet port on there expecting an RJ45 style port or they might plug their patch cable into the console or aux port. Not recommended and actually could damage the router. 9 out of 10 times it doesn't but you know, there's always that possibility. So you may ask what's a transceiver? We'll take a look at that on the next slide but you'll pop that onto the back of your Cisco 2501 router and it'll convert that AUI Ethernet port into an RJ45 style port that you're going to be much more accustomed to. The Cisco 2501 router is a fixed router. You're, you're not able to really add any additional ports or modules to it. You could add DRAM and flash and we'll talk about that in a moment but it's a low-end model and it, it's really great for labs. So. Let's look at the next thing we have here. We have our two serial ports, serial 0 and serial 1. We have our console port to the right of that. The console port's where you're going to plug in your console connection so you could receive the um, router output via your terminal session or hyperterminal session. We have our aux port. A lot of times what people will use this for is this is where they're going to hook up a modem to or a terminal server like a 2509 or a 2511. The reason they'd hook say a modem up to it is let's say this is your router out in your Los Angeles office and you want to be able to remotely access it because your network's down or what have you. So this is how you're going to be able to access it. We have our power switch and finally our power cord. Now remember we we're talking a little bit about the AUI port so the next slide is going to show us an example of a transceiver and you would pop this onto the back of the AUI port and you see the one end is your RJ45 Ethernet type. Alright, now let's take a look a little bit inside of, this is actually a Cisco 2503 router and we can tell that because it has an ISDN port on it. But at the bottom here, again we see our ports, Ethernet serial 0 and serial 1. The BIR port, that's our ISDN port. And then we see the console and aux port. The things we want to be familiar with if we'd opened up the top would be up here to the upper right and this is near the power supply. The power supply is actually on the right hand side of the board or to the right of the board actually. And this is our DRAM. The DRAM is similar to regular RAM in your computer and this, this is where your data comes in and it's where it's buffered at. Um, below that towards the center of the board are our two boot ROMs. If by chance you have a version of the router with very very old boot ROMs it may not support um, some of the newer memory flash modules so you can max it out at 16 megabytes so you may have to upgrade those to be to the latest boot ROMs. And to the left of that, we have here our two slots for our flash modules. The maximum size flash module you can put in is 8 megabytes per slot for a total of 16 megabytes on the 2500 series routers. And as a side note, the maximum DRAM module you can put in is 16 megabytes. So, now let's look at our Cisco 2610 router. Again, another nice router for your Cisco home lab. This one is modular though. Notice it doesn't have as many ports as 
the Cisco 2501 does. And the nice thing about this is one day you can make it a frame relay router, the next day it's a dual Ethernet cable modem you know, router. There's a, there's a lot of flexibility in the router because you're able to pop modules in and out of it as you need. So um, let's look a little bit here. We have our Ethernet port right to the left. Notice how with this one it's already a RJ45 style. We don't need a transceiver so that's kind of nice about this model. Again our console port which we talked about before aux port, power supply and power plug um, power, power switch and power plug. Now this big area over here is your NM slot. This is where you're going to put your network modules. Uh, to the right of that over some the Ethernet and the console and aux port are your WIC slots. This is where you're going to put your WAN modules. So you have slot 0 and slot 1 here. Now you may be asking what's a network module or a WIC module? Well if I'm glad you asked we'll look, we'll look at those on the next slide. This is a, on the left here we have an example of a WIC 1T module. It's a serial module so that would go if we bounce back in one of the two modules in the center there and that's for WAN connectivity. Now if we go back down we have to the right of that we have a NM1E and this gives us the ability to add an extra Ethernet port to the router and this is one of the network modules and generally you're going to have LAN technologies in your network modules, WAN technologies in your WIC modules. Okay, let's move on to something else. We're going to look at a Cisco switch now this is an older Cisco switch, but they're they're pretty much all the same um, as far as how they're going to appear and functionality. The front of the switch, you could see over to the left, you're going to have some sort of a mode button right about here. And now you see this is a 1924, actually 2924 is going to look very much the same. The difference is going to be instead of 10 uh, megabit or 10 base T, 10 megabit ports, you're going to have 100 megabit ports. And notice over to the right you have two uplink ports. Now let's look at the back of a switch. Very simple, you have a power plug. Notice like on the routers you had a power switch to turn it on and off. On the Cisco switches you don't. The way you turn it off, pull the, flap, pull the power. If it was a DC unit you would see in the center here a plug for you to plug in your DC power. And then we have simply our console port in the back. Okay, we hope you found this video to be of use and it helps you prepare for your Cisco CCNA certification. We are sure you'll quickly find that hands-on, real-world experience is the best way to cement the CCNA concepts and to help you pass your CCNA exam. For more information on how you can obtain affordable CCNA or CCMP study kits, as well to find more of these valuable CCNA study topics, please visit, visit us at www.ciscokits.com. The study topics can be found under the CCNA menu, CCNA Study Topics.